a box from his cologne. Okay. Now, on the back of this box, this, just so you know what kind of character he was, which I know a lot of you already know, but on the back of this, what is this, a Lagerfeld cologne, and so on the back of it, it says, ordered November 22nd, 2019, arrived November 26th, 2019, wait. Began on January 5th of 2020, and he's got a spot where it says end, with, but, but that's blank, of course. And then he says, last one was five ounces, lasted two months and 13 days. Oh, God. That's the kind of guy he was. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I do have a loud voice though that doesn't override it. Um, so he was a big help in getting my daughter back and forth to practicing that all the time. Because uh, my hours at work were in the afternoon. So I also was able to get him to pick up that little boy at the age of three and four from a daycare. So he would go and pick him up, lug all his stuff into the car, get that little boy in a car seat, go pick her up, get all of her stuff, right? And then go feed them before you finally dropping them off to me, right? At least a couple of times a week, yes? So it was just, I don't know, he was like 75 years old doing this. I don't think he ever saw a car seat in his life prior to this. <laughs> But, yeah, he would. You know, my my dad was a, such a creature of habit. You know, Lauren Lauren broke it down really good the one day. But we do. My sister and I do this thing called Marco Polo, which is like oh. a video texting. Because uh, we just don't have time to text to each other. But uh, I, I should play, play. But she she broke down my dad's day, which first of all it didn't it didn't matter what time of day my dad woke up. It could be, you know, 8 a.m., 3 p.m. It didn't matter. The first meal of the day had to be his egg and a piece of toast. So like, he didn't get up till like 6 p.m. The first meal of the day had to be the egg and a piece of toast. He wanted to be at your house. If he happened to be at your house, hey, you want to make that egg that you want? No, no, I'll do it at home. I got eggs right here. No. Okay. I got to get my paper and coffee. And so, okay, so then two years ago, I was, um, I, you know, I live in Vegas, for those of you that don't know, I live in Vegas. And I happen to be in California, and I don't know, I was just having a rough time with people that I was hanging out with, and I'm like, you know what, screw this, I'm going to Jersey. I said, I gotta go back to, I gotta go back to my roots, right? So, but I had this little kitten that I happened to find in a field that um, she had a um, dislocated, like, hip or something like that. So, so she came to California with me, and, uh, and so I told my dad, I'm like, look, I'm gonna come out to Jersey, and, you know, I'm driving out there, right? And I said, I'm bringing my cat. And so the whole time he's saying, don't bring that mangy cat here. Whatever you do, don't, do not bring that mangy That's cat. Right? I'm like, Dad. I go, Dad, you're going to love her. You're going to love her. He's like, Christine, don't bring that mangy cat. Now, I'm driving from California to New Jersey. I'm in North Carolina. He calls me up. He's at ShopRite, and he's in the pet aisle. He wants to know. He goes, do you think she's going to like the pate or the shreds? <laughs> <laughs> he goes to shop right every day. He would buy her her can of food every day. Now, I would go to Atlantic City for a couple of days, you know, a week. He would take such good care. I mean, he had a routine with her. Like, he cleaned her litter, litter box out every morning. You know, he, he fed her half a can in the morning, half a can. And they, when I left to go back to Vegas, this guy was sending me every article he found in the newspaper about cats. If, if you look at his YouTube history, it's all cat videos. I mean, he was like obsessed with cats after that. But it's so funny. And I have a picture. I don't know if it came Oh, up. God. Yeah. Have a, the picture with the cat? Yeah, that's her. That's her. Yeah, no, that's her. <laughs> Okay. He's on the left. So, just, just kind of like trying to rack my brain. So, just some quick highlights. So, there's a comedian, Eddie Izzard. I don't know if any of you are familiar, um, but he talks a lot about history or whatever. And at one point in his stand up, he's talking about whatever, and he goes, uh, Cake or death? And cake, please. So, that was like something that I always like, my father felt that was funny. So, and actually, well, the last couple of weeks while he was alive, I'm like, cake or death? Cake, <laughs> <laughs> please. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing. My sister wanted to get the car. He's talking about the Germans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
No, I found the card that said that. I did. Yeah, I was uh, he was, uh, he always used to say, you look marvelous. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Billy Crystal yeah, oh, yeah. from the SNL skit. Yeah. Um, I was always fond of him calling me darling as we got off the phone. Yeah. That <laughs> night. Me too, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my sister wanted me to bring up there, uh, when he's buying flannel shirts, she didn't want to buy them all with two pockets. Why you need two pockets? You got one pocket. What do you need more than one for? Uh, then don't get the one with the two pockets. Don't do it. <laughs> Uh, going to church my entire life, right? Both of my parents, uh, I would go to church like three times a week. And he was very adamant about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen was here. You couldn't do anything less. It had to be here. And if you were kneeling, your bottom could not be resting. From the, so you can't do it. You look at you, like, oh, forget it. <laughs> He had hernia, and the night before his surgery, you know, he liked to have a few glasses of wine at oh, night. Oh, yeah. Well, that particular night, I think he had a little more than that. And so the following day, I was like, you know, you're going to need to enlighten them on that information. You're heading into surgery, you know? And, like, I was with him, like, every step of the way to almost, like, when the doors were closed. I'm like, um, hey, hey, Dad, did you, you know, share that? Listen, he drank like almost a bottle of wine the night before. You might want to work that out. I don't know what it is. You can go on. You're in the game, right? Like, good thing. Might want to. And he ended up getting an epidural, I believe, on that particular day. Uh, and then one thing he always uh, things that he does on a daily basis is commenting when you're driving in the car with him. Doesn't matter. Like we put him to Atlantic City. He notices every make and model. And if it's a white car on the highway, it's a 99% chance that it's a female driving it. And every time we're, look, 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 I bet you, I bet you, I bet you it's a, you call it, call it broad. And I bet you it's broad. Right? Pull up next to it, and sure enough, every time it was. And it's funny, because I would like to have a white SUV. That's funny. Yeah, my dad told me this story once, so he was driving uh, down the parkway, right, and he was, I think he was in the, the middle lane, but he was riding on the line between the middle lane and the fast lane, and this guy in an SUV behind him wanted to go around him, and my dad was like purposely riding on the line, right? And I was like, I'm like, why would you do it? He goes, well, he goes, I, he, I don't know why he did it, but all of a sudden, whoop, it was a cop. Uh, and, and I said, good, it serves you right for that, you know? It just serves you right. Okay. Um, so being at my dad's too, I'm you know going through a lot of his things. I, mean, I don't know if this is the right one. No, it's not. Wait, where's the other one? I found. I found this. <clears throat> this is a wedding invitation. Um, it's a really cute one. It's got a bow on it. And it's from um, let's see, Saturday. The second of July, nineteen hundred and ninety-five. Say, Tito. Yes. <laughs> he still has a wedding invitation from nineteen ninety-five. I mean, that was crazy. And every piece of mail that came to his house got dated. Whatever date it came in, he always had, he's got the date on every piece of mail. And then, like, I was having a lot of stuff wow. sent to his his place because, well, you know, when living in Vegas, like, you get better offers if you don't live in Vegas. So I was using his address basically, uh, you know, when I would get my players, my players clubs um, cards. So he would, he wrote down every piece of mail that he sent to me. But it's, uh, I think it's seven pages long. Show the pages. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But every piece of mail, like um, wait, oh, he sent me. Yeah, yeah. Like on, uh, oh, what's the date on this one? I can't see anymore. On May 19th, he sent me an article about uh, marijuana. <laughs> he, was, he was obsessed with, the, with marijuana becoming legal. You know, and it's funny because he told me the story once about um, he went to ShopRite, and this is a, a ShopRite where you have to have a quarter to get the cart. You know, and he's like, and these kids were outside the ShopRite, right? And he was like walking in there, and they were like begging for money for something. And so he just ignored them. He's like, you know, I see them with their, with their, with their can. Yeah, with their tin, tin can, wanting, yeah, wanting, them, wanting money. He goes, I just ignore them. I just walk right on by. So he says he comes, he gets done shopping and he comes out, right? And he's like, he's like, what, what are you raising money for? What are you raising money for? 
and they're like uh, to basically ban uh, legalizing marijuana. He's like, oh no, I'm all for legalizing it. <laughs> He's like, he doesn't smoke or anything, but he was just all for legalizing marijuana. It was just so funny. And well, I could just imagine it's like an eight-year-old kid. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah. uh, classic, a couple of classics. So uh, TD Bank. I don't know if you know TD Bank's slogan, but it's uh, their their slogan is the most convenient bank. We went into the bank together one day. We're standing in the line waiting for the next teller. I think we were there. Thir I think we were literally standing for thirty seconds. Out loud. Not so convenient today, is it? <laughs> <laughs> And I also found this, and my dad moved into his condo in uh, 2003, 2003, dad moved into, wait, where's Lucille, Lucille, what, what year did my dad move into Fox Hills, was it? Uh, 2003. Okay, so uh, 2003, he has yet to unpack, he, say, he still has, he still has his stuff in boxes, but I found this from uh, Pete, hope the good times move in with you, it was like, like a welcome to new, uh, you know, new place. That's from Mario and his wife. That was in 03, and he still has this card. And also for Les's family. Uh, <coughs> this, thing, this thing has so many stains on it because it's so old. But he's had this on it. I just peeled this off of his refrigerator this morning. And it was, uh, it was uh, one of those holiday update letters that you get. And it was from 09. Like, I mean, he just held on to everything, everything. Uh, another thing he was infamous for, that's the right word, infamous uh, to do was it, anytime he had a dentist or a doctor's appointment, he walked into the office to check in. His first words out of his mouth was, uh, are we running on time today? <laughs> if these people were two minutes late, he would walk out the door. And quite on, when he uh, had the appointments with the GI, because uh, his shoulder was bothering him, that's what led us to find out that he had bile duct cancer. And the, the GI doctor, because the doctor wasn't ready to go, my father was like ready to walk out the office and like somebody had to like come in, oh, no, Mr. Capola, please, you just need to come and sit down. But he was very like, no, this is my time. And, and the doctors would be like, yeah, but there's other patients we need. And not, that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, my, my uh, his younger sister, um, Peggy, passed away November 30th of just this past year and uh, but before she passed, my dad happened to bring my sister over to my aunt's house. And my aunt was living in my grandparents' original house, which was bought like in the 40s. It was a house that my, my, my dad grew up in. And so it was the first time my sister actually got to see the inside of this house. And yeah, that's okay. <laughs> anyway, she was a collector of mail. And so she had, she had, she had, you know, she had a lot of. Me she basically had just like a little walking trail from the front door to her to her kitchen, right? So my sister sends me a polo, going, uh, "You need to come out here." I mean, like we, you need. To, so I said to her, "I'm like, well, I'm bringing Jerry with me." I go because we're a package deal. So right away, both her and my dad were like, "Well, you, you can't stay with us, you know." Like, so what kind of Jerry guy? Yeah. Was, you know, well, first of all, Lauren was calling him Gary. And so, uh, she was like, you know, you can't stay with me because I got kids, and my dad's like, well, you can't stay with me. And anytime I would come to New Jersey, let me just back back to that. Anytime, anytime I would come to New Jersey, my dad lives in a small one-bedroom condo, and anytime I I was staying with him, and he'd be bringing my bag in, he's like, do you want me to put put your bag in, in your bedroom? Like he always gave me his bedroom. He's got no living room furniture. He's got a recliner, and he's got like one of those uh, what do you call those chairs? I forget what you call them, just like, like one of those high back chairs. So he would sleep in the recliner and he would give me his bedroom. Anyway, so they were both like, uh, you know, you, you can't stay with I'm like, it doesn't matter. I said, who, just tell me who's giving us the credit card to buy our tickets and we're going, you know, we're, you know, we're coming out. And then that was like, I was like, all right, I'm going to get home. I'm going to get the kids situated. And I'm going to call my father. My father had this discussion how we're going to get the tickets. It's like, and I'll get back to you by 9 o'clock tonight. It's like 8.45, tickets are bought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, we're coming. I, I didn't buy them. I don't know who the hell bought them. I don't know. She called, give me 15 more minutes. <laughs> well, so anyway, so, so the first time that my dad met Jerry was um, December, December 4th or 5th. 
It was funny because the tickets were bought before my aunt passed away, and then she passed away before we got here. So Jerry and I got here like literally the day before her funeral. And so that's basically when my dad met Jerry. And uh, <laughs> and my dad loved this guy, Jerry. I mean, just loved him. There was um, twice I was at the hospital when my dad was coming out of anesthesia. And both times he was like, where's Jerry? <laughs> right? and I'm like, I'm like, he's at the house. Why, Dad? He's like, call Jerry up. Make sure he's okay. I'm like, Dad, you know I don't get any reception down here, right? Use my phone. Call Jerry. He was so concerned about Jerry, right? And then it was like... Uh, it was probably like two days before he passed, and uh, you know they, they really had him like pretty doped up at this point. And uh, so my sister is like at the side of the bed, and I'm at the foot of the bed, and Jerry's between us, but he's like kind of further back. And my dad happens to wake up, sees Jerry, and goes, "Jerry!" <laughs> <laughs> like that was his last word. <laughs> For real, that, that was his last word. Each side of Jerry. How are you doing, man? Jerry. And it was funny because uh, like, like, it was right before the Super Bowl um, That's why I sat when Jerry back. and I went to the so hospital to visit me. him. And there's a Starbucks in the hospital. So I get I get a hot tea and Jerry gets a mocha crunch on like a cappuccino. Or Cook, cookie crumb. So I, we get a, and he's in ICU at this point, you know. And he can't hold anything in. And everything is just going right through him at this point. And so we get up to his room, right? And he's like, what are you drinking there, Christine? I'm like, it's hot tea. Let me get some of that. I'm like, you don't want any of this, Dad. I go, you probably want some of what Jerry's drinking, right? <laughs> so he's like, so he's like, well, let me try it. So he takes Jerry's drink, right? He's, he's sucking it down, right? And more like, oh, just like the, the level of the drink is like, yeah. Like, <laughs> and then he, then he gives it back to Jerry, and he's like, well, he's in the bed, but he's just kind of like eyeballing like Jerry, like <laughs> seeing how much Jerry's actually taking the like, drink. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, so the next day, right? So the next, or, or no, it was later that day. No, it was the next day. It was uh, yeah. So Jerry went to get him another one, and then he was just waiting. He was like, his drink was like, oh my god, it was like, oh, I'm like, that's a funny thing. Like, uh -huh. It's a frappuccino. Nice to you at this point. Medical ICU. Yeah. And it goes screams from his bed. Hey Jerry, I'm in here. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Jerry's not even up on the floor yet. Yeah. Uh. Hey Jerry, Jerry, I'm not here. I'm in here. <laughs> My <laughs> buddy. Some of you are going to hear me sorry for the fifth hundred times. Sorry, but there's a comedian Brian Regan, and he talks about in mean, the hospital what level of pain you should say to get the good stuff, so to speak, right? So I started encouraging my father at one point, like, listen, no. just tell him you're at at least a level eight of pain, and, you know, because it goes just from a scale of one to ten, right? Mm -hmm. so say eight, say eight. I kept just mm -hmm. encouraging him that. So one day, I come in, and there's this nurse on duty who's very into her job, and she was like, um, Peter, uh, since I gave you that pain medicine, how's your pain level? And he's like, it's good. She's like, what would you say at that now? At eight. <laughs> she goes, but I, but I just gave you pain medicine like 20 minutes ago. It hasn't improved? Right? And he's like staring at her like this, right? And I'm on the other side of the bed, and he looks over at me, and he looks back over at her, and he goes, seven. <laughs> Uh, at that point, I wanted to high-five him. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the kids want to say something. Okay. So this is Juliana, my daughter, and his granddaughter, obviously. James, where are you, James? Right here. Oh. James. Here, this is Olivia. So these are uh, Juliana's teammates, and those are her very good friends, Maya and Kira, over there. This is James, my son. Um, so they have some funny moments because some of these girls have gotten a chance, especially Olivia, I think I can share, especially Olivia and Mira, I uh, had a chance to drive with my dad, and, uh, so they had a chance to drive with my dad, and they had a chance to drive with my dad, and they had a chance to drive with my dad, and they had a chance to drive with my dad, which one do you want to say? The speed bump one? Okay, who can tell me? What about the speed bump? I don't even know the story. I help you. My grandma is so anytime you went over a speed bump, I guess they get over the guy. That speed bump's a killer. <laughs> <laughs> Always embarrassing, Juliana. Go to the gym when he first started picking her up. No, no, no. Are you going to do that? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, no, no, no. One time, one. 
years I grew up with. Peter was a strange individual. <laughs> to say the least, he was a strange individual. One time, we were smoking in the back of the garage in Washburn Place. We set the garage on fire. <laughs> I said, what are we going to tell your father? Don't worry, I'll take care of you. He rose up. Hey, Pop, call the fire department. Somebody just set the garage on fire. <laughs> Peter loved to drive. He wasn't very good at it, but he loved to drive. <laughs> He was 15 years old and we stole his father's car. And we drove around. I said, what are you taking me for? He said, you have a look at it. I don't want to get caught by the cops. We were driving to Livingston all over the place. One of the things you don't know is that Peter was a sleepwalker. I said, how did I find that out? He told me the story. He says, I woke up one night. He says, I came out of my room. I went to the bathroom, opened the door. I went to the bathroom. I said, well, what's the problem with that? He said, it was a closet door. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so there was many experience. I was with him when he broke his arm. I was with him when he got, we got shot at by the cops. <laughs> we did a few things. But he was, he was always a friend. He was a good person. Um, we separated for a while, but then I met him a few years ago, and we got together for lunch and reconnected. But like I said, I'd like to leave a few words with you to hope it makes you feel better. Fill not your hearts with pain and sorrow, but remember him in every tomorrow. Remember the joy, the laughter, the smile. He's only gone to rest a little while. Although his leaving causes pain and grief, his going has eased his my hurt and given me relief. So dry your eyes, remember him, not as he was, but as, as I am now. Because I, he will remember you all and look on with a smile, understanding your hearts, I've only gone to rest a while. As long as I have the love of each you, I can live in my life and you live in my life and hearts forever. Thank you. Well, we love to roller skate so we used to go to farm park, but we never drove. We used to hitchhike there or ride our bikes there. Um, we love to do the trio. We always found the girls and did work, but I was always a leader. He was always impressed with that. I don't know why. Um, we always remember that. And, uh, you know, uh, passing is a difficult time for everybody, but remember, life is all going to be there. Hopefully, remember the good times. Forget about the bad times. Yeah, my dad always talked about how he was the best leader in, 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 in triples. Like, he was just raved about him. But my dad used to take me roll skating. Did dad take me roll skating? And uh, it was, you know, it was just like a weekend thing every now and then. And he would, like, did he do this to you? Where he would whip you around the turn? Yeah. Scare the hell. I couldn't stand. He would do that to me all the time. I'm Robert. I'm Ron Young. It's my brother. We were all right down. Well, two doors around. We, we were ice skating, we used to down at the park. We couldn't wait till it was We go down and do the whip, and he'd love to get the trucks on you and try to knock them down. <laughs> Such a ladies' man. <laughs> he, Peter, you never knew what he was. Peter was very quiet. Yeah. Um, I always remember he wore a wing top with tip shoes all the time and mimicked his fire. Oh, we're down the street, two doors down. There's a gentleman named Pat, Patrick Timothy. He had his daughter <coughs> named Maureen. She was about to go. At that time, she probably was two or three years old. And she's sitting on a swing. And Peter bent down to have a look at her. He took her, picked up a hammer, and hit square, and then he wound up with her. That is the size of a golf ball. She cracked his skull. The people look so surprised, didn't say a word. But the problem is, he turned around and the girl had cut her face off.
Coffee, anyone? So remember, Peter said, Wow, Peter, Peter, we hung out for you. So you take the can, and you know what that is. We took the can down, take it, and speak up. Yeah, Coke is a winner. I'm hearing aids now, so I don't have to speak so loud. So. We just had a blast in going up. We did a lot of things. Now, Peter was very religious. But every Friday night, we little church, and that's the church up in the corner for the Grace Chapel. And then we would like all the kids in the neighborhood to do a couple songs and give you candy. Well, Peter never missed that day. Every Friday night, that was the So, it was just a good time. Skating at Farm Park or riding a bike all the way up and coming down to where Single Rock is to overlook in New York. And uh, we used to drive, and that's probably 20 miles away. But we never told anybody. But nobody mentioned Peter's father, his mother. Margaret, that's Peggy, the name was, was the nicest lady, kindest lady. And his father, Really, really, really. He was the butler and, and chauffeur for Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols owned Ally Chemical. And he built a, built a big house over in South Mountain West Farm. And he worked for it. So we went to had greenhouses. He was the toughest man you ever want to see. I mean, somebody just told me the other day that when he was having a house built, that he had buttloads of, of masons come in. And he did, didn't want to, they didn't work for what he wanted, he took him off the job, and then wouldn't pay. Uh, it's, it's, his mother was a major, but I think she worked, she worked, I guess, in a little small time and time. But she took care of it all. And she never said a word. But I'll put it down on there. Well, you know, you, you, you remind me of a story about when, uh, when you were saying about hitting the girl on the head with the hammer. My dad uh, told me this story when my aunt was, because uh, his sister died of a, a brain brain tumor. Yeah. And uh, my dad had such guilt. Now, she died when she was 70. She was 70 years old. My dad had such guilt about about that because he said that when he was, I think, 12 or 13, it was him and uh, his brother Phil and Peggy, they went down to the park, and for some reason, him and his brother were throwing rocks at Peggy. And one of the rocks hit Peggy in the head. And so, now this is like 60 years later, she's dying of a brain tumor, and he feels like he, he caused that from 60, years, from 60 years prior. He said that it, he was so scared, he, had, he carried her home. He was so scared, but he never told me what happened when he got home, though. <laughs>
my my dad was taking care of me, right? So he was cooking me dinner, and you know, we would always get the frozen vegetables. So he made me something. I don't remember what it was that I had for dinner, but I refused to eat the peas, you know, because he made it, it was he made frozen peas with it. And uh, he made me eat that whole box of peas. And we would always talk about it. He's like, and today you love peas, don't you? Like, As a matter of fact, I do. I love peas. So uh, so I'm, I'm in Vegas. I'm at some bakery, right? And uh, there was this thing about... Um, it's like a, it's like a, like a book, like a card or a book that you would give. It's, you know, for your father, from, from the daughter. You know, it's about eat your peas. So I, sent, I got this for him, and I sent it to him. And then about two weeks later... I get something in the mail, right? And it's like the same book. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, uh, I'm so confused at this point because I'm like, did he send this back to me? But wait, I wrote on the envelope, but now the envelope, it's the same envelope. And, I, and it's got my, I was like so good. So basically it was a book where like you could do, it was like son to mother or mother to daughter. You know, it was one of those things. Anyway, going through his things, because he was like so on top of everything. Um, I felt, because I know I won't, I'll probably forget to send it to you because you know how bad I am at mailing. So I found your birthday card. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> My sister's birthday is in May. <laughs> I gave him the, the two father from daughter version, Jim. and then he sent me the, um, the you know two daughter from father. But he must have probably got a discount because he got two of them. And so he. Excuse me. That's right. We were throwing cherry bombs in the cemetery. Right, What's your email? I can't remember. It's in That's the city Jersey girl. I'm trying to film. And... He said, listen, I'll light it. You hold it right here, and I'll tell you when to throw it. He said, go. I got it here. All right, right. in my hand. Yeah. I lost hearing in my right eye, uh, right ear for about six months. But I still got the scar in the middle of my hand. I said, what am I going to get? Tell my, my mother and father. He said, tell them you fell on the ground. <laughs> uh, tell me you fell on the ground. <laughs> Is this my one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's the case? Hi, my name is Jim Sedara. I didn't meet Pete until 1969. We both worked for the same small air freight company in Newark, New Jersey. Pete had a few, maybe years more experience than I did. I was green. Anyway, we started out, Pete Art and myself, and a guy by the name of Bob McCluskey. Well, little did I know how successful we were going to be selling air freight, which Pete was a natural salesman. And of course, the impression he makes when he walks in the door, we're going to get everything is perfect. So the three of us started to put on a lot of business, 30, 40, 50 new accounts every single month. We made a ton of money for the boss, but the boss didn't feel like he owed us any money. So we were getting $15 a week raises maybe every five to eight months, maybe eight months. And all of a sudden, you know, two years go by and we're still bringing in this mega business. And I got this idea to say, you know, this is enough. We need better than this. And P 